Hey everyone, welcome to Escape News webinars. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, we are going to talk with a couple of Escape News members about their RV renovations. We know that's a really popular thing to do, especially as more and more people are hitting the road and going full time um, or doing long term, part time sort of thing, trying to find the best setup for them. Sometimes it's difficult to do when you're shopping around. So, renovating and updating your RV to suit your taste has become a really popular thing. So we wanted to make sure we could do what we could to help y'all learn a little bit more about people who've done it before. So we've got a nice little panel of, of people ready to help you. Um, also, before we forget, happy Veterans Day. Thank you so much to those of you who have served. Um, we deeply appreciate your sacrifice and sacrifices made by your family um, and, and those close to you while you were in service. And of course, even coming back to support that, that you need. So thank you so much. We want to take a moment to acknowledge that. Um, but all right, well, uh, what we're going to do tonight, we've got a couple of people here to talk about the renovations that they've done. I'm going to bring them all on in just a moment and let them introduce themselves to you. Uh, for the sake of time management, we're going to hold answering questions towards the end of the webinar. But please, as we're going along, if something crosses your mind, go ahead and pop it into the chat and we will hang on to that question to answer at the end. You know, sometimes you just have to remember things that come to mind while you're listening. Uh, but yeah, we're going to answer your questions towards the end. So I'm going to bring up the hand and we do some introductions. All right, are we on this? Hey. <laughs> so first, we are going to hear a little bit from Lisa. She um, and she actually is one of our escapees veterans as well. Um, tell, us a little, tell us a little bit about yourself, Lisa. She got it. Well, I am Lisa, and I am the lesser half of uh, my husband and I, married 37 years, and we have been full-timing, um, full-time RVing for over six years. We are now on RV number three, and um, the first, we had a uh, big, huge fifth wheel toy hauler, and then we moved on to a luxury fifth wheel. And now we, uh, as of last year, we downsized from 42 feet to 25 foot motorhome. So we're pretty excited to tell you everything we did actually with our fifth wheel. Thank you for having us. I don't think you're looking to try to say either. <laughs> All right, um, Hannah, tell us a little bit about yourself, please. Hi, um, I have been on the road since 2016. I'm on my second RV. My first was a 27 foot Class C, and I'm in like a 24 and a half foot Class C that I just got back in July. Um, I did run to beat the first one, but I didn't do a very good job, and I learned a lot. And it was kind of not as I didn't plan it very well because I didn't think that I would be doing this this long. So for this RV, I've planned everything and done everything a little bit more thoroughly. And um, I've also helped a couple friends with their renovations as well. And today I'll be talking about my kitchen. That's awesome. I can't wait to hear about it. I've heard some really cool things that you've done already. Don't uh -huh. tell us about your air fryer when we get what's the right time. Um, and then Kevin and Emma, can you tell us a little bit about yourselves? Hi hey guys. Uh, we also uh, joined the road uh, full time here in uh beginning in 2016 and uh are on to our second uh full-time break we've taken a pause on travels given the whole uh, covid situation as you can see we're not calling you from an rv right now uh, we're talking to you from an rv right now and uh we have two beautiful daughters who are not in the room with us right now and uh uh a uh, fun story that's a little too long to share this evening. Uh, our youngest was actually born on the road. And when I say born on the road, I mean literally uh, on the side of Interstate 95, uh, yeah, back in 2016. Um, and uh, we're going to share, uh, just like with uh, Lisa, we're actually going to share some projects uh, from our last RV uh where those are just a little better documented from uh yeah what what we've done in our current fifth wheel where it's actually unfortunately in storage right now well at least you're somewhere safe and enjoying your time kind of thing um right. so as a reminder for those that may have just popped in 
Um, we're going to have these, these four talk about some of the renovations they've done to their RVs. If you have questions, feel free to go ahead and add them to the chat, but we're going to hold off until the end to answer them to make sure everybody has a chance to get through their projects. So you might answer a question along the way that you would ask. Um, so we're going to send some of you guys into the corner for a little bit and let uh, Kevin and Emma, uh, sorry, I'm getting all confused here. Yes, let Kevin and Emma take and tell you a little bit about what they've done with their art. Just a second, I'll show you some photos too. All right, uh, so uh, I'll start first here. So this uh, unattractive shot is the underneath of the uh, sink of our uh, first fifth wheel, which was a toy hauler. Uh, and I actually converted this space into a uh, um, an area by rerouting the plumbing to uh, actually contain a dishwasher, believe it or not, a, a Fisher and uh, Paykel uh, dish drawer which uh, it's a little more expensive than, I guess, the base model dishwasher that one could buy for a house. But uh, where we do a lot of boondocking, it was actually a, a very, uh, uh, I guess, a good option to go with. It only uses two gallons of water for a cycle, which can hold, a, I think it was seven um table setting for seven people in one one uh, load here so uh there you can see where i've kind of ripped out all of the uh, plumbing underneath the sink and kind of in the middle of the project and uh there is some of the finished work as far as plumbing goes it wasn't fun to relocate the uh the gray water uh plumbing but um uh by a miracle now i've been able to do this twice on both of our fifth wheels as far as getting this dishwasher to fit under the sink. And uh, another serendipitous thing for us was uh, when I started uh, uh, moving the freshwater uh, plumbing around, I actually found a staple that the factory had put uh, through our cold water pipe that uh, luckily I was able to fix before hiding it behind the dishwasher. And, uh, this is one of our more popular projects or renovations, I guess. A lot of people uh, wish they had a dishwasher, and uh, yeah, this uh, has been our solution here. And uh, the neat thing about this dish drawer, uh, it actually has a built-in mechanism for uh, for taking existing cabinet doors and throwing it on the front of the dishwasher. So uh, the next shot there, you can see the dishwasher is uh, closed and you can't even tell that um, yeah, it that good. it's even there. Uh, all right, so this is the beginning of uh, um, our bathroom. Uh, I guess, I don't know if you'd call it a remodel per se. But yeah. I guess. Uh, but we covered the, uh, the a lot of the areas, the rig with a, um, I guess I'll let you. Yeah, we were, I guess we were undecided at that time when we first bought it that we, we knew we want, we're going to be living in it, but we weren't quite up to the commitment level of painting everything. So we went with a, we took out all that we could, like shower curtain and all that. And then we put up a peel and stick wallpaper off of Amazon. And this is the very first time I had done it. So it's not perfect in the bathroom there, but you can see I put decals on top of it to make it kind of a fun fishy theme for our kids who were like a newborn and three or four at the time. So having a fun bathroom was more for them. <laughs> we just had one bathroom in that rig. So um, there's just stickers on top of the, the peel and stick wallpaper. And we the way we got it so smooth, we, um, we had good success with using a hairdryer and a little pin to get any bubbles out and uh that peel and stick which emma discovered uh worked so well in our first rig we don't have any photos of it in this but uh, we ended up actually using it in the second rig as well uh, and moving on so uh this was our probably biggest change that we made in this fifth wheel uh this is the before shot so to speak we uh for the sake of uh, our kids having uh more of a space for their own uh we actually 
converted the master bedroom into a kid's uh, bunk room. So this is a typical fifth wheel where the master bed is up in the front or the upper deck of the fifth wheel. And this is what it looked like before. And then uh, this is kind of the, the final product. I took a, a bunk from Ikea and cut down uh, the bunk to be a custom fit, both height and width and, and whatnot. Uh, in the slide, we painted that back wall in the slide box and then actually made a removable desk there for, um, uh, for our oldest to use for school. We got a little more brazen at this point. This is a little bit later in our travels, and we painted this whole room. We this is our first foray into paint, I think. Oh yes, that's right. Um, the whole room was painted. And the yeah. re well, you might this is a toy hauler, like we said. So you might think, well, why don't you just put the kids in the back? Well, we'll get to the back, but the back was already in use for something. So we had to have good separation. Um, the back is Kevin's office. We didn't want the baby crying right next to Kevin's office. So this worked out pretty good for us since we weren't laying around in bed all day anyway, you know, the room really was unused during the day. Right, it was a more effective use of the square footage of the fifth wheel for us. Uh, moving on, all right, so this is another project we tackled here. The uh, uh, This is in the kind of living room area. There was a, a couple of, uh, I guess, uh, recliners here. Uh, we didn't like the, uh, I guess the lack of a, a dining room table in this space. So we actually got rid of those. Uh, and uh, with, again, another, we were uh, Ikea's best customers during this phase. Um, we, we actually bought a desk um, uh, surface, cut it to fit, and then a couple of, uh, or actually four Amazon, there's only two in the photo, but four Amazon uh, stools later, and we had ourselves a nice, uh, dining room table and again you can see we painted the uh, slide walls in this case and then we've got a very talented uh, um, family member that uh, that made us some very nice um, uh, what would you call that Valence. balances or window Small treatments curtain. the factory ones get tossed in the trash and then moving on this is kind of a, another view so that dining of you know what it looked like before dining room table areas oh, yeah. the newly installed one was to the left in this photo and then the uh, factory couch was miserable to work with that end piece there we had to actually strap down in front of the kitchen sink every time we moved so we had decided uh, at that point to just get rid of the couch and we switched to an ikea couch that had a pull-out bed built into it and then yeah, you can see that we did some, you know, red accent with red pillows. That's just another more peel and stick wallpaper. And as far as the brand goes, I wish I could remember it, but it's yeah, I we've probably tried over the years 15 different rolls and types of peel and stick wallpaper off of Amazon. I have a uh, preference for the cheapest, and we've only gotten burned one time, mm. and that was just because it was the light color and it was very see-through. Um, but you can see we in that we decorated with some velcro chickens in the top of our kitchen and other fun things i guess so we yeah those uh decorations there nothing that you see ever uh, ever had to be packed away or anything during travel there's velcro underneath darn near everything even the coffee maker the um yeah the pot holders the we had good success with that yeah. with almost knock on wood no trouble right and then this is kind of a different view of the living room how it was to begin with and then the next photo same, this is same a different view. changes different view uh yeah where we had painted the slide box there to help uh, brighten things up this typical rv way too much brown and uh um, and then i think the next is the uh yeah so this is hauler. the toy hauler area of the uh, fifth wheel in the back. This is what it looked like uh, kind of to begin with. We had a blank slate and I needed a dedicated office given my work and so uh, uh, I custom built this desk that you can see here in this uh, photo where 
the uh, the front edge is actually that it's I don't have any photos unfortunately of it folded down but to save on space when the desk wasn't being used because we carried a golf cart around with us and some other stuff um, you the the desk actually folded down uh, to conserve on space when it wasn't yeah in use here and then uh, here's a photo of um, kind of the space as it was when we started. And then the next shot is kind of when we had made it into our bedroom, uh, which the only kind of encumbrance here was the fact that uh, if somebody had to get out of bed at night, some whoever, me, was uh, on the uh, outer, kind of near the toy door, the backside, um, you'd have to crawl over whoever was um, on the front side. I shouldn't say whoever, because hopefully it was only you. Well, me. and if you had an early conference call, it's like time to get out of bed. We got to put the bed up. And then this here is uh, just another uh, nifty thing we did uh, to help with the uh, toddler getting into uh, nap time here. Then uh, that was that's it. That's awesome. Thank y'all so much for that. Um, I think it's really cool to see how you were able to um, turn your space into something that was so family friendly with just, I mean, granted the modifications took some time and some effort, but, um, but still being able to make that work for your family, especially as your family grew on the road. That's really cool. Well, um, thank I know you. a lot of people who are looking to, into like their kids who are schooling from home anyway. So why not try road schooling or why not try some of the hands-on learning that a lot of people do when they, when they travel with their kids. So that's a really cool thing to see. Thank you. All right, um, so now we're going to swipe slide you out and let's get Hannah, let's see. So I want to know how big Kevin's tanks are to have an in-house dishwasher. <laughs> I know they're oh, huge, yeah. but I'm sure other people want to know. Oh, definitely. Uh. Um, <laughs> let me get your split up here. Oops. Of course, my computer is not cooperating. Give me a moment. I'll get this on ready to show everyone. All right. All right. So here is my before of the same kitchen that I'm in. Um, I basically redid the whole thing except for the main cabinet frame. Um, a lot of inspiration pictures online, with especially with class CRVs, are really just where people have painted them. And I wanted to do a little bit more and kind of take some inspiration from the van life crowd and really make more counter space available. As you can see in the before picture, I had a, a double basin sink that went almost all the way to the oven. And then the oven didn't have a cover or anything. So it wasn't really usable space. I could barely fit my instant pot there in between the sink and the oven. Um, and now I've replaced the oven with just a stove and I put an air fryer oven underneath it. And I also replaced the double basin sink with a single basin round sink, which it just has a huge amount of depth. And it also has a great, um, great new faucet that you know you can pull and put it wherever you want and there's you can store things in the sink now you can set things on top of the stove because of the glass cover um and the air fryer is really great because unlike an rv stove which takes you have to you have to preheat it and then it takes 35 minutes to cook tots this cooks tots in seven minutes like from the time you put them in to the time that you're eating them if you don't watch them they will burn so yes, it uses a lot of electricity. I'll probably have to run the generator to use this, um, but I just love that I can cook food so quickly now and without using propane. Um, I also added a little basket here for fruit storage and produce storage. <laughs> My dog got scared. Um, and I kept the I kept the spice rack. So the, the layout is really the same. It's just that I replaced the stove, the air fryer, and the sink and painted everything, of course. And you have to, you know, you have to sand and prime and the color that I picked is actually um, my friend Carenza and Brandon's uh, shed color that we helped them paint and they had so much leftover paint. I was actually going to do a gray color that was similar to this value in terms of darkness, but 
their blue color was so pretty that I decided to go with this. Once I had everything together, I still wasn't sure of it, but it has really grown on me, especially with the um, with the nice countertop color. Oh, and I should probably talk about the countertop because that was such a nightmare. So the countertop is a maple slab. It was my second wood slab because the first one, I, I'm in a really small town right now, so there's not a lot of places to buy quality wood. So the first slab I bought when I started to stain it, I hated how it looked. It was a Douglas fir slab. We had to go like 30 or 40 minutes away to get this maple slab. And I decided to do marine varnish instead of just a regular polyurethane, which I definitely do not recommend ever doing. Uh, the marine varnish took me, made this project take about maybe two or three weeks longer than it should have because each coat takes so long to dry. And I messed it up by hand sanding per the instructions on the can. Um, but when you're sanding varnish, you're apparently not supposed to hand sand. You're supposed to use a sanding block or something that has a little bit more consistency. So if you are going to varnish a countertop, first of all, really rethink it. You should probably do polyurethane instead. But if you are going to go with marine varnish, which does have a really nice shine, um, don't hand sand it. Use a sanding block and sand very lightly so that you don't have to uh, redo it like I did. At a certain point, I had to sand it pretty much back down to the wood after I had already been working on it for like two weeks. And thankfully, I was able to stay in my friend's RV that they're not using right now while doing this because with the stove taken out and the sink taken out, I obviously wasn't able to use my water pump or my propane. So if you are going to redo a kitchen where you're taking out appliances and redoing a countertop and it's gonna be a while, I definitely recommend doing it before you move into the RV or while you have somewhere else to stay because it, this would have been impossible to do on the road, just part of why I did it first. Um, other projects in here, everything else I'll be able to do while I'm out on the road, while I'm in the desert, it doesn't really matter where, I can paint or do flooring anywhere. Um, but yeah, I think the best part of this Actually, the, the whole thing is great, but the best part is the is the air fryer. And I really love that there's so much more counter space with the smaller sink and the glass top, stove top. Um, so yeah, if there's any questions. Oh, this is, you guys are probably gonna ask the air fryer model. It's the Cuisinart TOA 65. I got it on sale at Costco, but they also have it on Amazon, of course. I got the sink from Amazon and the stove top is the Furion oven, which I also got from Amazon. And this, if you can guess, is also from Amazon. <laughs> so that's pretty much it for this project. I wish I had provided more pictures because I've done a bunch of other projects like in my last RV and in a friend's RV. But this is really probably the most thorough one I've done. I even learned how to undermount a sink and how to do plumbing because the new sink drain did not line up with the old sink drain. So I had to install a drain and do the plumbing. And so far, nothing has fallen apart. Uh, but we'll see if that continues to be the story. I think that's pretty much it for me. I can answer, I could answer a couple questions, I guess, since maybe mine was short, but what can I cook in the air fryer? Everything. <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you so much for that, Hannah. And I, I, um, I have been like watching some of your, your, your uh, post about it as you're working on it and saw some of the things afterwards. And I will admit, like other people have said, like that counter is absolutely stunning and you should be proud of it. But I thank you because I have no desire to try it myself. Yeah. Do high gloss polyurethane yeah. instead. The dry time is way faster. There's no weirdness afterwards. Like I still can't set anything significant on here because it will leave a dent in it. I set a hot mug on here the other day and within like a minute there, there's now a permanent circle in there. So it's actually going to take probably a month or two to fully cure because there's so many coats, but it is nice and glassy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for that. We're going to go ahead and shift over to Lisa and then we'll bring on you guys back in a little bit to do some questions. <laughs> Hey guys, Lisa here. Um, as I said in our interview part in the beginning intro, um, this is on our former fifth wheel. So you're gonna see a little bit different 
um, than what we have now, which um, we're going to release later. Anyway, there's a picture of me um, when I went shopping for all our supplies. Yeah, I was a little spazzed out, but uh, no stone unturned. And I am married to a very, very good uh, renovator painter, uh, my husband, Dan. Anyway, in our um, projects, you're going to see that we have that beautiful fifth wheel right there. It's a Heartland Landmark 365. It is a full timers coach forward bedroom um, and the big living room with the bathroom. It was a split bathroom, which we'll show you in a second. And then um, the kitchen in that was in the middle with an island. And like every RV you see, you see brown, 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 beige, bleh. Well, we're going to change that because we went with color. Those are our uh, recliners, the old. Um, pay attention to the cornice boards, how dull the uh, walls were, the, the dark furniture. It just made it like we were in a cave. My inspiration was a simple melamine plate I had picked up at Walmart. I fell in love with the colors. And um, one of my favorite places in the whole wide world is Key West. And then I started matching uh, fabrics, getting paint swatches, textiles, pillow covers. Uh, and then I went and chose my paint. And um, I went with three, four different colors. At first, I made my project board, project board, so I could stay organized and I put all my samples up so I had a clear thought process and um, what we were doing. And as all of you know, things get lost even in an RV. Um, so I kept everything in my project folder. And this folder went with me everywhere I went. So if I was trying to match um, other textiles or artwork or whatever, I had my folder and I kept all my receipts and my papers that everything was all together. And if I had to take something back, Everything was readily available. Now, what we did is we did a lot of research on our uh, wall covering. We painted. And one thing I want to st state right here is if you're going to buy a pr primer, a certain brand, stick with the same brand paint because then um, you know that they're both going to work together. And you'll see I have the rollers and we have angle brushes and we also got caulk. I want to tell you, um, whenever you paint in an RV, you're going to need to buy stock in silicone caulk and make sure it's paintable because um, I know the reason why all the cabinets in RVs are brown. It's because they hide the shadows and imperfections. So once you start painting, you're going to see every crack, every split, every flaw. So you're going to go through a whole bunch of caulk. You're going to caulk everything, cracks, seams, everything. We, and there's three different types of primer. There's the Zinsser, there's uh, Glidden, which I don't think now is called PPG, and the Kills. We went with Glidden because we've had experience when we had our sticks and bricks. We love the product, it, it did well. So we stuck with the Glidden now called uh, PPG and that's the Glidden Gripper. Okay, so our first project was we wanted to paint the ceiling because the ceiling was the same color as the walls, which it just made it look like a cave. So what we did is we took one of those ceiling vent covers with us and we color matched it. And only when, you, so you could see the, the old ceiling right there. What we did is um, we just tinted the Glidden Gripper so it was primer and paint all in one. You could do that with really, really light white colors and it was an eggshell. So that's the old, you'll see that a dark, well, Dan 
uh, painted the ceiling and then he went back and he painted where that mirror is, that dark brown and the framing to make it look like a craftsman ceiling. And he also painted the crown molding. Look how nice and finished that looks. And remember I said about the caulk? He caulked the bottom of the crown molding where it met the wall and the top of the crown molding where it meets the ceiling. So it came out flawless. It was beautiful. And there's the finished ceiling. As you see, it does look like a craftsman ceiling. And it matches. Now, he didn't put the light covers on. Um, they're still... Uh, they're missing there, but um, you can see it's all one color. And there is the uh, paint, and we went with a satin paint, a satin finish, um, easily to wipe off. You don't want a, a gloss or a semi-gloss because it's too shiny, and uh, shiny paint tends to show flaws, which in RVs are predominant. So we went with a satin, easy to clean, yet it uh, hides the flaws. Okay, so this is um, part of our kitchen. We're gonna talk about the uh, uh, backsplash next. As you see, our countertop and our backsplash were made of the same material and it was just, it, it had no personality. Well, we're gonna change that. So at Home Depot, in the uh, kitchen department uh, near the appliances, they have these ceiling tins, but they're made of a thermoplastic. And um, as you can see right there, and it's like a pewter, but it is plastic. So what I did is I painted it. First, before you paint it though, Dan dry fitted it, cut it, got it every, everything all nice and perfect. And then he removed it and I painted it. Now, first I primed it with the Glidden Gripper and I did maybe one coat and then I painted it with uh, that cantaloupe color. And when it was dry, always allow, by the way, between coats, always allow 24 hours to dry between like your primer and your paint, okay? Um, and then what I did is I sanded the emboss to create a 3D effect. And as you see, look at that, um, that backsplash. And see right there, Kevin uh, Ridley, see my air fryer? <laughs> and it, it just was, that was the first thing people see when they walk in the door of our RV. I wanted a nice, pretty focal point and it, it hit the mark. Then, yep, then in the kitchen, I bought new hardware. Our cabinet poles and knobs were a uh, cheap pewter and I went to Hobby Lobby and I waited till the knobs were on 50% off sale and those were our kitchen knobs. Um, those knobs were in our living room which um, were above. I wanted something a little different, a little nautical um, and, and I only bought four of them that they were also a little focal point. Again, those were in the kitchen and um, those are ceramic. And then the poles, they did not have the drawer poles, the handles. So what I did is I took the old handles and I spray painted them white. First I prime spray painted, then I painted them white. And then I took a simple Sharpie marker and I duplicated the dots that were on the knobs and did them on those. And you couldn't even tell that they were different. The chairs were an ugly pattern, the same as our cornice boards. And what we did is we went to Ikea. We're another Ikea follower. And um, those are simple chair covers. And Dan um, stapled or thumbtacked underneath and they were a light gray tweed. So there you see that we took the aqua turquoise uh, for the walls and you can see how nicely our chairs kind of brightened everything up too. Um, and now those the cabinets and the chairs don't look too bad in there do they? 
And that's looking from the kitchen into the dining area. It just was a nice little cozy nook. We also replaced every piece of flooring in the fifth wheel with the exception of the slide. We had not figured it out because the slide, the big super slide was on a skid and we could not figure out how to do the finished edge. Um, we're a little scared of doing that. So we just left the carpet. It, it was fine. Um, oh, by the way, that flooring was Home Depot Allure. If I can offer one piece of advice, if you're going to recover over the existing linoleum, um, skip the underlayment because it makes it too thick for the slide to go over. And when the slide would come over, it left indentations um, into the new uh, Allure flooring. So skip the um, that silver insulated um, underlayment. And that right there is uh, um, as you walk in the door and look to the left to the finished uh, room. This is over the recliners. You can see how much brighter it is. Uh, Dan also painted the ceilings of the slide as well. And um, it just is a big, bright difference. And this is in the far back. You see the, that's, um, that color is pretty much like a lime green. We also did, uh, instead of getting rid of those window cornice boards, because we had MCD shades, which were a two part, the day shade and the night shade, is we, you know, we used what we had. And um, I figured out how to cover those cornice boards. And we'll talk about those in a second. We even color coordinated our kitty cat beds <laughs> because, you know, um, some of the accessories we picked out were already existing. Um, the clock I repainted, simple spray paint. And um, that uh, beach driftwood star I got, believe it or not, at a yard sale for five bucks. And that painting actually was from another RVer and it just, it was Key West. And I found the frame at Hobby Lobby, did not like the color. So I uh, bought a, a little container of Ceramicoat paint, acrylic paint, and I painted it and distressed it to um, coordinate with our other interior. And my little lobster hook, another accessory that was where we hung our ball, ball caps on as you walk in the door. So here, let's talk about the cornice boards. Here's the top one is the original. You see how ugly that is. And I just literally covered over it. And um, it, we have a YouTube uh, video on how you cover those. So we could talk about that later. But you know what? You don't have to throw them away, um, especially if they're covering uh, the shade mechanism, if you're going to leave that alone. MCD shades are not cheap. We were not getting rid of them. And I didn't really want uh, drapery or, or curtains, so we just left them and recovered the cornice boards. And there's the finished, finished product. Looks so much lighter. And there's a pattern cornice board. I chose not to do every cornice board the same color and, and pattern fabric. I chose different ones to section off the room and kind of give a little bit of flow and some fun at the same time. So there's the MCD shades, the uh, night shades pulled. So you can see why we left the cornice boards up. Um, and that's the back sofa, which we found was too uncomfortable. So we turned it into a beautiful workspace. Now, Dan was going to school and I uh, work uh, remotely. So we needed um, a table that would fit two. We chose not to get a heavy desk because, of course, we have to watch our weight limits. That is an Ikea desk or uh, table. And it, you take the two middle leaves out and you could push it together to make a smaller table if you wanted. 
but since we needed that extra space, um, that fit absolutely perfect. And those chairs also were from Ikea and they were white and Dan painted them for me. Uh, it was poppy. And then we put um, pillows on top for the uh, cushions. All right. But those chairs were short lived because they were uncomfortable to sit at all day. We went on Amazon and bought two really, really comfortable, color coordinated, of course, office chairs that um, had the height feature and as well as the back feature. We chose not to get arms on them um, because these would slide under the, the table. And that is the, can you make that a little bit bigger? That is the finished of the living area. Look how bright it looks, really, really fun. Even on um, uh, dreary days, you could, it, it just felt like you were going to a party all the time. You were going to Key West and um, it, it was just a really, really fun place to live. Um, we moved the colors. Now I only have one photo of our bedroom, but we moved the same color scheme into our bedroom and we kept it simple we used the same fabrics for our cornice boards um, we painted the frame of the headboard um, and we left the, the cabinetry alone and i want to tell you about painting cabinetry we chose not to paint it number one our son used to be uh, the finance guy for a, a housing contractor and I kid you not, every um, customer they had that um, painted their cabinetry less than three years later was going and ordering new cabinets because it, it turned out horribly or it scratched too easily or got dirty. It just did not wear well. So our landmark in our situation, it was a new RV. We, we said, let's leave well enough alone. It's beautiful. What was the mahogany or something? It, so it, it was a moot point. So um, uh, that was our bedroom. And there's our uh, finished living area again. Just awesome. And see, see how white the ceiling is now with the lights just bounced right off of it. And the white, um, whitish flooring the, the light bounced off of that too. So it was no longer feeling like a dark dungeon. Oh, you didn't do the bathroom? Correct. Sorry, um, we actually are <laughs> right up, getting close to time, so we should be okay. have time for questions. So sorry, okay. we can definitely talk about the bathroom, but we've got, um, I wanna make sure that we had a chance to get to more of the viewer questions and that sort of thing. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and bring everybody else back as well. Give them a chance to get back on. There we go. Awesome. Thank you all so much for your explanations and the photos. And it's really cool to take some photos through your projects and the before and afters and that sort of thing um, and get to see the different progress that was made. Clearly, the air fryer was a hit. There's a lot of <laughs> excitement about the air fryer oven. Um, all right. So, um, well, first of all, one of the things I want to ask each of you um, is it's like, I know, Kevin, you talked about yours being a fifth wheel. Um, and Lisa, you, you, your models were mostly in a fifth wheel. Hannah, what kind is yours? It's a class B. This one is just under okay. 25 feet. Um, and then, uh, so when it came to picking them, because sometimes people are looking at these renovation ideas and kind of figure things out. Um, when it came to choosing your RV, when you individually got yours, were you going in with the intention to make these changes from the beginning, or you just you picked your RV and then and then kind of decided from there what you wanted to do? Um, I guess Lisa, go ahead and start, and then we'll go with Hannah and Evan and, and Emma. We, I always have intention of putting color everywhere we are. Um, we just had a rule that we were going to wait till the warranty was over uh, up with our landmark. Um, until we could, and it wasn't even a day later, and I was already picking out color schemes. That's awesome. 
Yeah, I definitely went into this rig with the intention of remodeling it. Uh, my first RV was a 91 or 92, so I knew that there was nothing to lose there. This one's a little bit newer, it's an 03, um, but I loved that there wouldn't really be a lot of value to lose by remodeling it. And you can see mine kind of has all of the cheap, like, cabinets, um, and I'll still have to do the cabinets at the top of the kitchen. I'll have to redo everything, really. But yeah, I definitely went into this with the idea of gutting it and making it look brand new, even though it's not. And then Kevin, how about you guys? And yeah, we, uh, so with the first fifth wheel, we definitely uh, knew we'd be making some uh, changes in order to initially that to make that back area uh, of the toy hauler bay kid friendly, uh, you know, and then that kind of uh, evolved over time. It that was uh, everything we shared today wasn't a, a like a, an all in one kind of project. That was an evolution that kind of kept uh, morphing as we. Um, we change and, and the kids get bigger and um, and then beyond that, our current fifth wheel we we definitely knew uh, getting into it that we were going to be making changes. The um, it's kind of an oddity what we ended up with for a fifth wheel. The rear uh, room, uh, the slide was actually shipped from the factory empty, so it was it was actually a blank slate for us to uh, to kind of fill in as as we went along which ended up actually being a, yet another ikea bunk modification um so one of the questions we got early on for um for you and emma is you said you got your your wallpaper on amazon of course there's tons of brands on it do you remember what like one of your preferred brands or what you were in your context i right know that we started off using um, roommates which is a popular brand that actually Ended up, um, as time went on, it wasn't as good. We bought it again later, and it kind of fell off the wall. So I never, I don't have a consistent brand. What I, what I did is I read the reviews. And if within the first 10, someone said it fell off the wall, I didn't buy that one. So. And, and as em, Emma mentioned earlier, uh, the using a hairdryer and, and a needle for uh, any air pockets there seem and, to yeah, be. Yeah, the hair dryer even helped bad wallpaper stick up better. You know, even the kind that I didn't like, I didn't like it because it was see through primarily. But when I really gave it the hair dryer, that thing wasn't coming off and that ended up being, you know, that can get a little too gluey. But um, it, I only had the problem where it fell off the wall one time and then one time it was too see through. But on the whole, if I really went back and read those reviews, I just didn't do a good job on reading those. <laughs> awesome. Um, well, of course, we have questions about your air fryer oven, Hannah. And so Shirley wants to know, what all can you cook in the air fryer? Um, you can really cook anything in it. Even though I call it an air fryer, it's really just an electric oven with an air fryer function. But it can do, oh, I can't pull up the settings right now because I don't have it plugged in. But it can do baked toast, air fry, broil, really whatever you want. So anything from like, wings to tops, which are of course what I'm going to be eating, to chicken, or I have a friend who cooks steaks in hers, really anything that would go in a regular oven can go in here. And it's a pretty good size too, just to give you guys an idea, you can fit a pretty big pan in it. Like it's, it's plenty big for even a couple or maybe three or four people. Um, and, and cool, uh, basically all the replacement. <laughs> For, for those out there that already have an Instant Pot, uh, there's actually a kit uh, you can buy uh, to convert. You just replace the lid, and you can have a uh, an air fryer lid on your Instant Pot. And that's what got us hooked on air fryers to the point where our new oven in our condo here, we actually made sure had the air fryer feature. Awesome. Yeah, I would have done that too if mine was a six quart. They only have it for the six quart though, and mine's a three. Oh, quart. yeah. I'm the three now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I've got another question for the air Actually, Kirsty wants to know um, do you have any concern about ventilation around it? Yes. So um, in the Amazon reviews and in all of the Facebook groups, people accidentally melt stuff quite frequently. Like even the wall outlets behind the air fryer will melt. 
So thankfully, this is small enough that I have probably a foot of distance between the back of the air fryer and the back of the wall, and the back is actually where it gets hot. The sides and the top don't seem to get hot at all so far, and I actually have it ratchet strapped down for when I'm moving, so that seems to be fine. Um, if I do have any issues with the back getting warm, I'm still kind of testing it, but if I do, I've found a temperature-controlled fan on Amazon that will automatically activate to pull air out if that does happen. Um, but so far, I've been cooking with it probably once a week, and it's been fine. That's awesome. Um, so, we have a couple more questions. We're, we're got about 10 or so minutes left. If you guys have any questions, feel free to go and pop them into the chat, and we'll take care of the couple that are there already still. I'll make sure we get them to everybody's that we can. Um, so, we've got a question from, from Michael Wyatt. Um, or just kind of, I think he's giving towards a question. Um, they're removing the dinette and looking for a couch to replace it. Um, oh, here we go. And uh, they're wanting to know that they basically looking for something that has a better um, seating height when it comes to couches because of the height and the, the size constraints of their slide. So when it, those of you that replace furniture in your rigs, do you have any suggestions on brands or places to look for that kind of stuff? So our, uh, and actually we've used, we, we've kind of fell in love with this uh, couch from Ikea and I don't think you can get it in leather anymore, but the, the couch is deeper than the slide in both uh, of our situations. And we uh, kind of overcame that by uh, the front feet of the couch. You can actually buy different feet from Ikea in this situation. And we cut them to make sure that- uh, Yeah, they were wooden, uh, like circles. Right, so I cut them down to, so then the couch would be level, even though it was sticking out beyond the slide. And then uh, slide going in and out, we put felt on the bottom so that it would, it, you know, in the case of the first fifth wheel, it was a hardwood style uh, imitation wood kind of flooring situation and it wouldn't uh, drag or dig in that way. Nice. Um, did you have any input on that, Lisa? Actually, I guess you guys pulled your couches out and put other furniture in, didn't you? We, we took out the sleep sofa and we put in the, the Ikea table, which it, it took a lot of measuring, but it worked. In other words, don't count Ikea out. Oh my God. Right, yes. Well, browser, browser catalogs as you're planning the furniture changes. Well, and they Ikea, will, oh, oh, sorry, go ahead, Lisa. Ikea is made for small spaces and they're lightweight. They have come a long way from being the, the cheap old fiber board furniture. The, they, I mean, that table that we had, Dan actually stood on it to fix the ceiling fan. So it, it's, it is sturdy furniture now. Awesome. Also, um, Karenza chimed in that article has some lower seating heights as well to help answer Michael's question. Um, all right, so going back to Hannah's RV, um, so again, the air fryer, have you tested yet to see how much power it uses while cooking? I haven't specifically tested it, but I do know that it's an 1800 watt appliance. So I plan for it to use that much on and off whenever it's running. So if you do want to get one of these and you're not using a generator, you want to have probably at least a 2,000 watt inverter, which is basically- And, and it's, not, it, it, it's not going to be 1,800 all the time, just when yeah. the, as, you know, the heating element's cycling on and off, then, yeah. Exactly. Beth wants to know where you got your giant gorgeous sink. We know you said Amazon earlier, but do you have anything more specific to help people find it? Yeah, um, I pulled it up. So it is from Amazon. It's from the MR Direct store. And the name of it is 465 18 gauge dual mount single bowl stainless steel bar sink. I had to do a bit of searching for this because um, the sinks that I did see were either too shallow or way too deep, way too big or way too small. And this one was perfect. Perfect, perfect. Awesome. So another question from Shirley. Um, any thoughts on how to cover up soft touch or RV wall board in a combination of both in their RV? So uh, our uh, current fifth wheel has soft touch uh, for the ceiling, 
and I have no idea how you would cover that up, uh, given how um, how flexible that it is. I, I just, you know, it's kind of got like a almost an insulation level or layer directly underneath it. I I don't know, uh, yeah, how you could dye or or, or cover that up. Uh, you know, and then the wall board, I think all the painting type projects that have been shared here today, I think were would be considered uh, yeah RV wall board. And whether it's paint uh, using the, the gripper primer type stuff that uh, Lisa was talking about or the, um, the stick on stuff that we were using, uh, uh, I think it uh, uh, ultimately is all RV wall board underneath. And for those who are new to RVing or maybe just not familiar with the term soft touch, what does that mean when you're talking about RV surfaces? Is that the carpeted kind of feeling? Uh, yeah. So it, uh, in in our, our ceiling, it, it's almost like a spongy. So it, it's a, a white uh, product that has kind of a spongy layer underneath it. Kind of like headliner, right? It's yeah. Like yeah. Basically. yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't recommend painting that at all. If you wanted to do something different with that and you were determined, you'd probably have to take it down and refinish whatever's underneath it because if you try to paint that, it's too flexible. It'll end up flaking off eventually. Yeah. Right. What were you going to say, earlier, Lisa? Well, I, you know, I just read this because I belong to interior designer um, for boats and RVs. And um, the ones that have the carpet, um, uh, ceilings there's a way you can paint those um i think you just have to you know like uh youtube it um and like in our class c here just like kevin said it's like uh it's like a spongy vinyl ceiling and it is paintable but make sure you seek a painting specialist who knows what products to use on what surfaces um, but you know, what I, I forgot to mention in my part of the presentation is if and when you're going to paint your RV, you want to place yourselves in a very dry area. We were in Pahrump, Nevada. We purposely went to Pahrump, Nevada. <laughs> and um, Dan kicked me out for a week. Actually, it was when our son's wife's baby shower. So he kicked me out for a week because I would be like, you missed a spot, <laughs> you know. Um, and it is a one person, um, you know, painting because you're moving around, you're moving furniture and stuff like that. Um, and also you can choose other paint colors the way you want them. All you have to do is take them to the paint store and they can color match them, even just like we had our uh, ceiling vent covers they, you can take a picture frame or a fabric swatch and have them color match it. So colors, no, no there's no bars held. Awesome. Right, thank you for that. Uh, sure. Oh, go ahead, Nancy. And that sounds pretty accurate. <laughs> okay. um, so Charlie's asked about fastening uh, couches, tables, et cetera. I know. You, you guys mentioned earlier, Kevin and Emma, that you actually had to strap your factory furniture, what came with your RV, to strap it in place when you travel. Um, but when, like for, for all of you, how do you manage these pieces that obviously aren't attached to the floor permanently? I'll start with Hannah. How about you? Did you say you'll start with me? Oh, I'm, I don't think I'm going to have anything that's not strapped to the floor. Um, the new dinette or the new sofa frame that I'm going to build, it is going to be like all screwed in and stuff. So I don't really have any of that stuff. So we did ask earlier what you're sitting in. <laughs> I'm yeah, I'm also sitting in my camp chair because I literally don't have a sofa or a dinette right now. <laughs> I've lost that still. Um, yeah. And so Kevin and Emma, how did you, how do you guys handle, especially even thinking about like child seats and things like that for your kids as you're traveling? How do you, well, actually, I guess you have the truck, so that's that's different from it's um, Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we our our fifth wheel that we have now actually has a um, this uh, nifty independent suspension from uh, Moride that uh, uh, we actually have accidentally forgot stuff 
out on counters and whatnot and done a big travel day and we end up finding that it's still exactly in the same spot that it was when we or, left. Yeah, I guess our main goal is to not have to strap anything down. Right. We don't right. want to. Like yeah. it, it, it makes every time you pack up and, and, and whatnot a, a pain. But so besides the Velcro trick. Yeah, we don't strap anything down. Right. There's no, we, we don't have any intentional, um, I guess, latching down of things, uh, you know, on a moving day. Um, and, and how that has to do. And I think the, you know, the, uh, you know, regarding the couch that we had replaced, it, the, because it's a sleeper sofa, the darn thing is so heavy, uh, you know, we've never, never had an issue as far as it, it hitting, and I, Grant, we've done some crazy uh, roads in Mexico, for instance, that, you know, uh, pothole wise, make you know the u.s roads look like a joyride and uh yeah we we've never even had that thing move on days like that <laughs> that's awesome um so lisa how about yeah i think i know you guys have the office chairs that roll around and things like that how do you think about that now when on moving days we would flip the office chairs upside down and we would put them in the recliners and then we would bungee them you know, you got to do what you got to do, right? But the um, IKEA table, Dan found these. Um, they were like L brackets, and he screwed uh, one end to the back leg of the table, and then the what would be the bottom part he would screw to the floor, so that table wasn't going anywhere. And um, we, we never had a problem. I do want to mention that, like, the fifth wheels do realize that the far aft of the fifth wheel or travel trailers are going to bounce a little bit more just so you're expecting that. So if you're going to put something back there, do make sure it's secure. Even with independent suspensions, we had one. Just be aware because you don't want to be trapped Back, uh, have something trapped back there and can't get your slide open. Um, Especially if you're considering those fancy new rear kitchen floor plans. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. so I think we've got um, one more question. This is actually for me, from just from what things I've seen happen um, on social media and that sort of thing. So a question that often gets asked by people who are still looking for their first RV or looking for their they're hopefully looking for their last RV, um, if, you, if that means. And uh, a lot of them are concerned about resale value. When you start doing major changes to the inside of your RV, they worry about are you increasing or decreasing the value. And even if you haven't, like, I know, I know Lisa, you you said you've changed RVs since then, and Hannah, you're having multiple RVs. Um, and I can't remember, Kevin, if you still have that fifth wheel or if you're in a different one now. We've moved on, yeah. Okay. Um, so, how what experience did you guys individually have with um, being able to to sell your your prior RVs after you made those changes? We have we have a funny story. When we were trading in our fifth wheel to the, this Winnebago view, um, we were in the sales office, and he and and we were at the Heartland RV rally in Goshen at the time, and the salesman he said. I have a picture of the inside of your RV. And of course, Dan and I looked at each other and go, oh God, here it comes, right? Well, we showed him our, our blog and he just sat there. I literally a whole minute, like he didn't know what to say. And he said, I don't think that's going to work. We're not going to be able to sell that. So it didn't decrease the value. But what we did have to do is we went through and we repainted everything, the lightest gray, and we recovered the cornice boards in a gray stripe. It actually looked, if someone wanted like a whitish interior, it was beautiful. So it didn't decrease the value, but be prepared to depersonalize it just like if you're selling a house. How about you, Hannah? How did, how did it go on your prior RVs? So um, I didn't really care at all on my first RV because, it, again, it was almost 30 years old when I bought it. 
well, I guess it was 25 years old or something, but it didn't have much value in the first place. So the work I did to it actually ended up increasing the value massively. Like if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't have been able to sell it for what I did sell it for. Um, in this RV, I don't know how it will affect resale value, but I also don't really care because it's my house. So at the end of the day, it's still going to be cheaper than renting an apartment or buying a house for the time being, as long as I keep it for a little while. Mm -hmm. I think that given the current aesthetics, it'll probably be an improvement. It may not be everyone's cup of tea when I'm done with it, but I also probably plan to sell it private party again once I'm done with it. So it's not, not a huge concern. That's good. That's awesome. And I, yeah, I totally agree. The, the color palette you've chosen and the design, the style that you've chosen is definitely very contemporary. And it's very, it's very much an interest and on trend right now. So I'm sure you won't have too many issues when you're ready for it. <laughs> um, and Kevin and Emma, how about you guys? Uh, so we actually, uh, you know, we, we didn't have any advice like uh, kind of what Lisa had just or earlier offered up of as far as not touching anything uh before the warranty and and as much as we loved our final our finished product we had a ton of uh um, issues warranty wise structurally with that first uh, fifth wheel we had bought it brand new we modified it immediately i had added you know solar and inverter uh upgraded it to have disc brakes a bunch of other things and uh they the company or manufacturer Thor actually refused to give us a replacement fifth wheel if you're if you're buying new which I I would I would recommend anyone kind of to shy away from uh, for their first RV um, it, it's something to keep in mind if you're planning on diving into it to modify things if you you it I can personally or we could personally attest to it causing uh, headaches in the event that you run into some serious failures. I mean, minor warranty stuff like a furnace or fridge or anything, they're not going to uh, knock you for. But when it comes time to, you know, the point where they're going to give you a new RV because of troubles you've gotten into, uh, it definitely gets you into a, a warm pot of water slowly heating up. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and I've heard the advice from a lot of people of, um, it's there are reasons to buy new, but there are also plenty of reasons to buy used. And it's something, especially if you really want to take that custom route and really make it your home on wheels. And every in every sense of the term, looking for used is probably the best way to go. You have you have also more fluid um, funds with which you that in most cases used RVs tend to be a little bit less expensive than new ones. So um, yeah, on that note of of looking for an RV, if you are still looking for your first RV. Definitely consider used because your first RV is never going to be your forever RV, no matter how much you love it. Um, yep. And you you don't know what your lifestyle is going to be or what you're going to want in an RV until you already are traveling in it or living in it. And um, don't be afraid of old RVs in general either because they can often be built and have better bones than new ones. Because no, no matter what RV you get, you're going to have problems. Even the new ones have birth defects, as they call them. So don't be afraid of an older RV if you do find one that you love. But do you do diligence, obviously. Yeah. And it's, it's the same even with houses. Like it's whether you're buying a brand new house or a house that's been around for decades, like you're, you always have issues when you move in and, and settle in and make it your own kind of thing. Like it's there's always some things to be to be worked on. So don't be afraid of RVs just because you might have run into right some issues. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I didn't give those comments to try and discourage anybody from getting into RVing. Just, yeah. yeah. Well, all of you are clearly, aside from, from, from the consequences of COVID, all of you are clear you're happy with your RVs and happy traveling. And so, yeah, definitely have, running into issues has not stopped you from enjoying a more mobile lifestyle. Right. I saw you with your hand up, Lisa. Did you want to say anything? Well, if you're looking behind, if you look behind me, um, we did already paint our Winnebago view. But again, we did wait our one year, and Dan, I picked out the colors, and I made the Valances, and we because this is our home. And but you know they say three times a charm. This what we're not buying another RV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is it, <laughs> you know. 
they say that the average serious RV owner, full timer or whatever, you know, gets to free and they finally get it. Yeah, we finally got it right. It's small, like Hannah's. We're we're the same size as Hannah, but we got two people and two cats. I can't imagine living in this space with another person. <laughs> you have a slide too. Of the first two months of COVID, we were stuck in Texas oh in 95 degrees and you couldn't go outside. And Dan and I, I mean, we've been married 37 years and we still are here. I bet. I understand that. All right. Well, thank you all so much for taking the time out of your evening to share your projects and share your ideas and your advice. Um, you definitely appreciate it. If anybody wants to follow up with more questions or um, to kind of follow along with your adventures, how can they reach out to y'all? Uh, just Lisa start with Hannah and Kevin and Well, you can actually find a lot of our renovation ideas and interior decorating tips on our blog, alwaysonliberty.com. And we do have a YouTube channel, although we've not pressed too far into that because we're fairly new at YouTube. But everything is pretty much on our blog. And how about you? Um, I have a blog that I never update. It's actually not even live right now, but maybe eventually I'll post there. It'll be thecurlynomad.com. Um, but you can also follow me on Instagram, which is the.curly.nomad. And I also want to plug my upcoming app here. If you are a solo nomad or if you're a nomad on the road trying to meet people and build a community, uh, my business partner and I are building an, an app called Nomads Only. You can go sign up at nomadsonlyapp.com to see when it comes out, and it'll help you meet and date nomads. <laughs> That's awesome. Have a good Oh, uh, so we uh, uh, used to, well, I shouldn't say used to, but it hasn't been updated in a while thanks to the whole COVID thing. But uh, uh, for friends and family, we have a blog uh, that anyone's welcome to take a peek at. That's just uh, wickedwanderers.net. Um, but besides that, me. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Me that notebook. Yeah, so it looks like we are all going to meet at Hannah's rig after this for a tater top party. <laughs> It'll be a <laughs> tater, tater tours party. <laughs> tater top party. And uh, uh, Dan, yes, I was holding back. Yes. <laughs> we appreciate that. <laughs> well, thank you all so much. We really appreciate your time and your information. And um, hopefully we'll see you again down the road and hope you all have a great evening and all of you watching, thanks for joining. And if you have any questions, um, you're welcome to add them in the comments on this, um, on this as well. And in case you didn't catch the whole thing, we'll have it up on YouTube in the next couple of days on our channel, Escapees Art Club on YouTube. Um, and as well as it will still be live on, or it'll be posted on our Facebook page as well. So if you want to watch it there, if you'd like. But, all right. Well, thank you all. I hope you have a great evening and see you all down the road. Thank you for having us. Bye. Bye. See ya. <laughs> <laughs>